right, welcome back everybody. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you another video. In this video, Nick Carter praises Cardano. Let's check out what he says. Also, we need to take Cardano very, very seriously, according to some of the wealthy backers who have now jumped into the project. Recently, we saw Charles Hoskinson blasting FUD, saying DeFi projects may move over to Cardano. And taking a look at the secret weapon, what makes Cardano tick? Taking a look at that, as well as Charles Hoskinson saying that the Basho era will make Cardano scale to millions. And how does that relate to their initiative in Africa? Taking a look at some of the key topics that were discussed in Charles Hoskinson keynote speech in the Blockchain Africa 2021 Summit. So lots of interesting things to talk about here in this video today. All of that coming up right after our sponsor. Our sponsor for today's video is EcoPool, the sustainable stake pool. Every month they're donating 30% of their fees to charities for the planet. This month in March, the Ocean Cleanup Giveaway is underway. As a way to say thank you to their delegators, they are giving away one organic cotton t-shirt to three of their delegators that come to stake with EcoPool before March 31st. In order to enter to win, you must delegate a minimum of 1,000 ADA to EcoPool and also send them a message to let them know how much you've delegated and the transaction ID. So if you are interested in growing your ADA by delegating to a Cardano stake pool, be sure to check out the sustainable stake pool EcoPool, ticker ECO. Thank you so much to EcoPool for sponsoring today's video. So to get things started, recently we saw Nick Carter praising the Cardano project. Nick Carter being one of the members of the famous Backstreet Boys back in the 90s, saying in a tweet, move over Bitcoin, it's Cardano's turn now. It's cleaner and better for the world when it comes to producing. And he also added some hashtags related to carbon footprint and clean energy. So with Cardano being proof of stake, definitely being more sustainable as a blockchain than what we've seen with Bitcoin and its proof of work consensus. We had quite a few responses, namely one from one of the prominent members in the community, Kyle Solomon, who is so gracious enough to be dropping space coins to Cardano community members saying, good to hear, Nick, do you want space coins? DM me the ADA address and I will send you some space coins running on Cardano. They are more secure and faster than Ethereum tokens. So people now are taking keen interest into Cardano and the cool things that are starting to be built on this blockchain protocol. And definitely members in the community definitely stepping up to help bring about awareness as well. Now, talking about some of the interest being taken into Cardano, we're seeing a lot of the wealthy players now starting to look at cryptocurrencies. They see the innovation behind Bitcoin and the narrative that it plays as a store of value. But as far as utility for blockchain applications, I think people are starting to look that Ethereum is having some problems as it comes to scaling. And they're looking at Cardano to see if it can solve some of these problems. What we've seen recently is that Thomas Young, a CFA, came out with an article talking about why you might want to start paying close attention to Cardano, mostly highlighting some of the key topics as it relates to who is working on it. We have an all-star development team building on Cardano, Charles Hoskinson at the head as CEO of IOG, but not to mention also the amazing community members who are also contributing to the growth and adoption of this project. Another benefit also comes to Cardano's relative youth. Charles Hoskinson started working on Cardano in 2015 after Bitcoin and Ethereum's problems became apparent. So as far as what we're seeing right now, we've got the three parent companies for Cardano. You've got IOG, you've got the Cardano Foundation, and you've also got Emergo. All three pillars of the Cardano project bringing about different features and functionality to the project. IOG namely focusing on the software side of things. Emergo being more of the commercial arm. And the Cardano Foundation focusing more so on partnerships and marketing with certain jurisdictions. In this article, it states that when Cardano initially launched, the network reserved 5 billion ADA for its three development teams. At the time, the dollar figure came to a modest 150 million equivalent enough to make an impact, but not enough to change the world.
For reference, Microsoft spends 130 times as much annually on research and development expenses. Since this time, ADA's increase in price has turned this modest sum into a fortune, with the reserved ADA now worth almost $6 billion. So I think with what we've seen in the recent increase in price, definitely something that can be used to help change the world. Very interesting to learn about that. Also, we were presented with some of the opportunity that we might see from projects currently built on Ethereum moving over to Cardano with the launch of smart contracts with Gogan. A trend that we're seeing now in cryptocurrencies is NFTs. Minting new NFTs on Ethereum can cost anywhere from $100 to $600 just to cover the gas fee, meaning that virtually all inexpensive digital artwork today are sold at a loss. The electrical costs that miners spend, after all, must come from somewhere. On the other hand, Cardano costs pennies to transact. So something like Cardano being as efficient and affordable as it is to build upon, definitely a viable option for people who are currently building on Ethereum might want to look and consider moving over onto Cardano once we see that functionality. So very interesting to see that. I think that big money is starting to pay closer attention to Cardano. Next up, we recently saw Charles Hoskinson blasting Cardano FUD. Lots of haters still out there as it comes to the success of the Cardano project. I think people really just hate to see you succeed. I feel like that really goes true for a lot of people who have made success in their life. So according to Charles Hoskinson, he said that despite the fact that we don't have full programming ability at the base layer, already applications like shoe authentication on New Balance and cattle authentication with BeefChain are using the metadata features of Cardano. Yet they say, what are the dApps running on Cardano? So what he's referencing are some of the applications currently that are being used on the Cardano blockchain. Currently on the blockchain, we have metadata as well as native tokens. The only thing left as it comes to writing smart contracts is going to be the full Plutus functionality we see with the Alonzo hard fork coming very soon later this year. As if smart contracts come and there will be no demand, we are overwhelmingly subscribed. At the moment, our company has no more capacity to service deal flow that comes in for Cardano. People come to me, unless it's a super high value deal, and some have, we jump them up the queue. So they are working with a lot of these governments. They are working with companies. They're partnering with people who want to build on Cardano. So it's not to say that they're not working hard. I think that Charles has been fighting the FUD for a very long time now, and it's still surprising to see the amount of people who just would refuse to believe that Cardano is being built from the ground up and that they're focusing on the problems that we've seen with other blockchain protocols. So he went on to talk more about some of the FUD, and I wanted to just touch on one of the other topics that he discussed as it relates to DeFi. So he also mentioned that all this DeFi you see, it's not loyal to its underlying infrastructure. These businesses are not in the game to make Joe Lubin or Vitalik Buterin money. They are there to provide a service. If it's better, faster, and cheaper with higher liquidity and more users on our chain than another chain, then they'll migrate over out of self-interest. So I think all we would really have to do as a community to see the success of Cardano and laying down the FUD finally, once and for all, is really just see the implementation of these upgrades happen on the Cardano blockchain and actually start to get the use and adoption that we're anticipating. So Charles Hoskinson doing his thing, talking more about what we're doing as a blockchain protocol. Talking about the secret weapon, so there is definitely something special about Cardano, and I think a lot of it has to do with the community. It was even mentioned in this article, Cardano's boisterous community is largely responsible for its growth and landmark achievements. Recently, it was announced that Cardano's Project Catalyst, a community-propelled initiative, was launched to give support to decentralized applications. So Cardano's Project Catalyst being the largest DAO in the world, taking decentralized governance one step further. And I think that what we're going to see with the launch of these network upgrades, when we do start to see these dApps being built on Cardano, Project Catalyst is going to evolve into this ecosystem where we're going to see so much innovation and so many cool ideas being brought by members in the community. This is something that will truly decentralize Cardano, not to mention that there are already a couple thousand stake pool operators helping to decentralize and maintain the network. Once we start to see the innovation being brought by things such as Project Catalyst, 
developers will start to begin to get funded, essentially creating businesses built atop of the Cardano blockchain. So very excited to think about that. I think Cardano's Project Catalyst is one of the things I'm very excited about, just to see all the amazing innovation that's gonna come from that area of the project. Next up, Charles Hoskinson saying that the Basho era will make Cardano scale to millions. We're seeing a lot of initiative with Cardano in developing economies, more specifically in Africa. So how would Cardano be able to get to a point where they can facilitate transactions to reach millions and then billions of users? So he referenced the scaling solutions we've seen for both Ethereum and Bitcoin, saying that both Plasma and Lightning Network are welcoming ideas, but they are not without a common problem. He said that their common problem is the fact that they were developed without an accounting model, smart contracts, and a consensus algorithm. So according to Charles, he said the fact that over 2,000 stake pools now running on Cardano implies that they all operate independently, and there will be an increase in the network throughput as its level of decentralization grows. What he is referring to as the scaling solution for Cardano is something called Hydra. Hydra is going to allow for a secondary scaling layer to be built atop of these stake pool operators. And it's a completely voluntary thing that these operators are able to participate in, essentially offering greater network throughput for those who are willing to participate and essentially giving Cardano the bandwidth it would need to facilitate transactions for billions of users. Very cool to see that. I think that Basho is going to be something that we see probably in the distant future. I think that the priorities for Cardano currently are going to be things such as multi-delegation, trying to work out all the parameters for stake pool operators, of course, Gogan and the launch of smart contracts. But to think that we will get to that point eventually where we do have to scale to reach the demand for billions of users, Really incredible to think about how far ahead the people who are designing this protocol are thinking. Another thing that Charles had mentioned was that they are truly parallel and there's a way to shard and go on-chain and off-chain gracefully, which means that you would have unlimited throughput for micro payments for transactions and transaction batching and so forth. He added that throughout the whole year, we will be building a prototype and basically at some point when we need it, we can bring it to the network and the stake pool operators run it. As we get more decentralized, meaning more operators running the system, you get more channels, which means you get more throughput. So it's essentially a cascading effect. As you build on top of the protocol with more users, more stake pool operators, building out these channels to facilitate all the network throughput that's gonna happen, once we do start to see smart contracts, it's pretty mind blowing to think about what they're going for. This is truly going to be, in my opinion, a global financial operating system. So some very interesting remarks there from Charles Hoskinson regarding scaling. As it relates to all the progress being made in Africa, recently we saw Charles Hoskinson's keynote at the Blockchain Africa 2021 Summit. So this article is on the IOHK blog, essentially just outlining everything that was spoken in that keynote speech from Charles Hoskinson couple of key points that I found very interesting from this. I went through this speech and I just highlighted some of those remarks that I found were very prominent. He said that the aim is that those who are the poorest among us will also enjoy the same financial systems as those who are the richest. It's a simple idea, but in practice, almost impossible to achieve with legacy systems. So that is essentially the vision that we see behind Cardano, bringing about financial services, bringing about digital identity with solutions such as Atala Prism, all of that for those who have the least within society, helping to bring them up to participate on the world stage. He said that we were all unified with a common cause and a purpose. How do we enable a system to operate from the bottom up instead of the top down? How do we figure out how to give people self-sovereign identity and put them in control of their own money, control their own future, and give them a platform to build upon? So that's what they're working on with these organizations. They do have partnerships in Ethiopia as well as Mongolia. So lots of interesting developments happening in Africa. He mentioned also that what we're seeing right now in Africa, the reality is, is that Africa is not a poor continent and African nations collectively are not poor. They are rather in a situation where they have a tremendous potential and real wealth, but the wealth is inaccessible because of bad systems and a difficulty in globalizing the continent's nation states. So this presents a tremendous opportunity and an opportunity nonetheless that I believe that Cardano and those who are building upon it are looking to capitalize on. 
The other magic of Cardano is that it comes with a funding system called Catalyst. Today, at the time of this article, over a quarter billion dollars, so 250 million is available for grants for those who wish to build infrastructure, applications, products, and services in the Cardano ecosystem. So a very innovative thing that we are seeing here to think about if somebody were to be living in Africa and they had an innovative idea, they could take advantage of the opportunity presented with Project Catalyst, giving them essentially as much opportunity as what you would see from somebody living in a developed economy like the US or Europe. So lots of moving parts with the Cardano project as it comes to governance, as it comes to scaling, smart contracts. There's so many things to keep track of as a way to be able to keep track of all of the important development updates tomorrow, March 25th, we are going to see the Cardano 360 monthly update. So definitely be sure to mark your calendars. Be sure to stay tuned for this. You definitely want to make sure you're able to join. I have a feeling it's going to be an action packed episode. They're going to share progress on all things Cardano and talk about what's coming next with their Plutus Pioneer program and smart contracts rollout plan. Definitely be sure to join. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link for you in the description below. If you haven't already registered for this crowdcast, be sure to check that out. It's going to be a jam packed episode filled with lots of updates. All right, everyone, that is what I have for you all here in this video today. Lots of exciting things happening with the Cardano project. If you guys did enjoy this video here today, and if you did find some value from it, please be sure to drop a like for me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out and make sure you click that notification bell so you know exactly when I post a new video. All right, everyone, thank you all again so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.